Welcome to another episode of Dire Times. I'm your host, David Dyer, and today we're going to be looking at another 37mm reloadable shell. Now, if you missed my first series on 37mm reloading, not to worry, you can click here and check that out so you get caught up to speed. Now, in that series, we looked at American Special Ammo's Black Powder Shell. It's a good round and a lot of fun, but if you want to get serious about 37mm, we're going to take a look at Scott Pace's Smokeless 37mm round from ReloadableShells.com. Now, this is going to be a two-part video where part one, we're going to focus on ReloadableShells.com's projectiles, which you see here. And then the second part, we're going to do a shell assembly and range demonstration. So let's get started here at the workbench and take a look at the three different projectiles available at ReloadableShells.com. Okay, so let's get started. Scott designed three projectiles, a wad, the standard round, and then a finned round. Now, the wad is useful when firing homemade cardboard projectiles. If you have a registered launcher, you can load steel shot in these. Now, a wad will also add a layer of safety with any homemade cardboard projectile. And now, you might be asking yourself, what's the difference between black and smokeless powder anyway? Now, that's a huge topic unto its own. They are both dangerous, but in this application, it's the difference in how fast the powder releases the stored gas when it's ignited. So, smokeless powder generates much greater pressures uh, when confined, allowing for a significant increase in the performance of your rounds. But in doing this, you must be extra careful with homemade rounds. Now, if the cardboard tube, like this one, gets caught in the shell, and the pressure forces the contents of the projectile out, so this gets hung, contents goes forward, you could be dealing with a very dangerous fireball in your face. Now to reduce the chances of that, we add a wad, just like that. So it's a nice hard surface for those pressures to, to push against. So they are easy to fuse and seat. Just drill a hole in the center of the wad Once you have your hole drilled, you can then take your round and seat it in. But you'll notice sometimes the cardboard tube is the exact size of the wad. When that happens, just line up your wad, take a box cutter, and then very carefully trace the outside of your tube where the wad matches up. Once you've gone all the way around, you can then find where the tube starts right here and just peel that layer and you'll see where you cut just comes right off. Once you have your hole and then the excess peeled away from your round which is not going to weaken this any at all. Um, a smoke round doesn't really have a lot of issue with uh, uh, you know pressures. It's going to come out here now. You'll notice I don't have this one drilled and ready to go yet. This round won't work. Uh, for the mere fact that the fuse isn't going to be long enough. So I'd want to make sure that when I fuse this round, I had it long enough that it's going to stick out the back of the wad. But for demonstration purposes, you're going to be able to see this. So where we peeled away the extra, we're going to be able to insert this into the wad. Now you see there's little, little slots here, so we can actually see the fuse uh, in there and we'll be able to uh, manipulate that through these little slots with an awl or any kind of tool to actually make sure the fuse hits the hole. And as you can see, it, uh, it has come through the hole, but we would actually want this to stick out here. Um, but you can see that's how the wad would keep that all in place so it doesn't blow all of this out dealing with the extra pressures. So very simple, easy way. Uh, and then of course, we would just take a rubber band and place like that and then this would be ready to uh, insert into a 37 millimeter shell but now keep in mind just like I said we're gonna actually want that fuse to stick out here uh, so two things are gonna occur um, it's gonna make it easier to ignite uh, once it leaves the shell and uh, it's also going to uh, give you a longer burn time um, so once this hits the ground you may have to wait a, an extra second 
But now uh, you may be asking about how this particular round was made. And if you're curious about that, you can click here and you'll see exactly how I put this together. Now, for the most part, I've actually been able to recover uh, these wads and reuse them uh, several times. And for a cost of, uh, you know, three three dollars or so uh, for the wad, it's uh, it's pretty nice for the reloading. The standard 37 mm projectile is very easy to fuse and load. Just screw off the top, drill a hole, place the fuse, little dab of hot glue, and then fill it with whatever you like. I'm going to show you two easy loads that produce beautiful displays. Now the easier of the two is to take fuse and cut it into one inch sections, making sure to cut the fuse at an angle which will increase the ignitable surface area and ensure the best chance that all the sections will light. And then of course you're going to add um, 8 to 15 grains of black powder, make absolutely certain that you're loading black powder or pyrodex uh, in your burst charge. Uh, then all the fuse sections, you just put them down in here and uh, you can add as many as you like. Screw the cap back on and this will make a great display that requires almost no prep time and is very economical. Now I'm using crackling fuse and a slow burning fuse. You could really mix and match uh, and cater the display to whatever you want. Now the second method I'm going to show you is considerably more impressive. The same place I bought the fuse, Skylighter.com, is also the place that sells the D1 Glitter Stars kit. Now this is a very simple kit uh, that will give you a brilliant display. Now it takes about three hours to mix the chemicals uh, and kick out these little discs or whatever you want. Um, and a couple really nice tools for that is a 100 mesh screen uh, and a star pump. Now I would highly recommend purchasing the star pump if you make these for your 37 millimeter. I used a small spoon and though it worked, it wasn't ideal. Now the ease of loading these uh, projectiles is amazing. Add your burst charge somewhere between 8 and 15 grains of powder. Then your D1 stars pellets in the end. Screw the cap back on. Add a rubber band to hold it in your shell and you're ready to go. The last projectile I will show you is finned. Now that means the round will spin as it travels through the air and will stabilize itself. Unlike the regular 37 millimeter projectiles, it won't tumble through the air. And you can typically expect much greater accuracy and potential uh, greater range from these rounds. Now, I like to put smoke mix in these, but you can load them uh, the same way we loaded the other rounds, uh, or really whatever you want in them. Uh, as long as you have the proper launcher to shoot them from. Now if you'd like to see how I made the smoke mix, you can click here. Now that kit is from Skylighter.com and it's really nice, but you can easily make another smoke mix from Snuff Remover and Powdered Sugar. About a 60-40, 60-40 mix. Uh, you simply screen both materials uh, through a 60 mesh or 100 mesh screen and then uh, pour them through a kitchen colander to combine them thoroughly. Um, of course, you want to test this uh, before you actually load it in your rounds to ensure good ignition. To make the smoke projectile, uh, I like to uh, start with the fin projectile, and you'll notice where the uh, threads come up into the round. We want to drill a hole on either side of the threads, and you can look in and see those. I'm using a 1 4th inch drill bit. There's one and and there's two. So you can see our two holes on either side. Take a knife, trim down the excess there. Then we're going to take foil tape and place over the holes. There's one and there's the other. Now I don't like to wrap the tape because I want to allow the tape to actually burst off. Uh, and the reason we put these vent holes in here is to give a place for the smoke to actually escape. If you just screw this together without putting uh, any kind of holes in it, and if you're, you're using smoke, it will just blow apart and uh, could be a little dangerous because this becomes a projectile a second time. So clean our work surface up here. Right, once we have that, we just need our smoke mix. Here it is, and it's just as simple as scooping, scooping as much as you can get in there. 
So what I like to do is I got some in there. I'll take a little plunger here, which I just made from burn handle. Tap that in. Now add a little bit more. The more you get in, the more smoke you'll have. So you can compact this fairly well. And then just kind of on the sides there and it'll knock the uh, mix out of the threads and you're good to go there. Uh, then we want to give a place for the fuse to go so I'm going to just push a hole into the center with my awl and then we'll take the bottom portion and run our cut fuse through about halfway in just about to there and we'll cut this off here in just a second. And then just add a little bit of hot glue there in that void. And that will hold the fuse. Right, once the glue is dried to the point where it no longer comes off when you touch it or is, is malleable, insert the fuse into the hole you created. And screw you around together. Then take a couple rubber bands. And this will be what actually holds it in the shell itself. Then we'll take our hose cutters and we'll cut our fuse off at an angle at the back of the shell. So we have plenty of surface to ignite, just like that. And that is a fused, thinned projectile ready to be loaded into a shell, which we will cover in the next video. I highly recommend these rounds. They are super easy from beginning to end. Screw them apart, fuse them, load them, shoot them. Can't get any better than that. Thank you for watching and be sure to check out part two where I show you how to complete Scott's 37mm smokeless round and we hit the range to appreciate all our hard work. I've also added all the links we talked about below to include ReloadableShells.com's website where you can take a peek at the projectile specs and load data, uh, much of which we've talked about today. I, of course, am your host, David Dyer, and this was Dyer Times. I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to check out part two of 37mm smokeless shells, which went up, will be right here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.